Hey there guys, welcome to Dino's Vault once again. Today I'm reviewing the much anticipated smartphone of this year, the OnePlus 3, the new flagship killer or I'd like to call it the flagship slayer from OnePlus. Now OnePlus One was a stupendous success because of the hype they managed to create with the invite only purchase method. Also the main USP of OnePlus has always been offering unheard of features at an unbelievable price. Now long story short, the OnePlus 2 somehow failed to weave its magic because it missed out on certain important features still I chose to buy the oneplus 3 because sometimes I feel it's better to go with what your heart tells you rather than giving room for too much reasoning well this is the retail unit I ordered last week and I received it this past Sunday so let's not waste any more time and dive straight into the review in this video I'll be doing the unboxing I'll be sharing my first impressions as well as everything you need to know about this phone I'll also be checking out the camera performance and will be sharing some snaps and video clips that were shot using this phone. This is my first OnePlus phone so I'm really excited to check out what makes it such a thumping hit with the enthusiasts. Now out of the box we find first the superb looking handset. It looks premium, sturdy and very sleek. We also get the quick start guide as well as the user guide in the box. We then of course have the sim ejector tool. Digging in further we find the dash charger, the much talked about hero of this rendition of OnePlus that promises 60% of charge within a span of just 30 minutes. We also get the type C cable for charging and data transfer which is of very good quality. The charger also employs 5 custom safety measures to protect the adapter, the cable and the phone from power fluctuations. Unfortunately, we don't get any earplugs in the box, but that doesn't really matter for me because I already have these and believe me, these sound superb. The sandstone black back panel on the OnePlus One gave it a unique visual appeal in the market. However, now we get a full metal space grade aluminium alloy body structure that does exude the premium feel, but it also renders it very slippery if you aren't careful. The body is carved out of a single slab of metal to make for a seamless and stunning looking design. The phone is extremely thin at just 7.3 millimeters. As a result, it is among the thinnest smartphones in the world currently. Now looking at the physical layout, up front we get an 8 megapixel front facing camera and the other regulation sensors like proximity and ambient light sensors. At the bottom we get the speaker, the dash charging port and the primary microphone. On the right hand side of the device we have OnePlus's famous and unique alert slider, the notification control button with which you can control what notifications should appear on your phone. We also get the volume rockers here. On the left hand side of the device we have the slot where we find the dual sim tray and the power on off button. At the back we have the 16 megapixel primary camera and a single LED flash. I wish it were dual but as long as it is effective I guess it shouldn't be a problem. We will take a quick look at how the camera performs later in this video. Powering up the phone the startup animation looks quite good. While setting up the phone we have the option of setting up our fingerprint scanner. We then have the option of going with on screen navigation buttons or the capacitive touch buttons. Then we can also activate various gesture features like double tap to wake, drawing O for camera drawing a V for flashlight etc. So once the phone is set up we are welcomed by the trademark never settle home screen from OnePlus. Now does it mean you would never be able to settle down if you buy this phone or will it leave you completely unsettled? Well I'm just kidding guys I know it means never to settle for mediocrity but to always strive for excellence. This attitude of OnePlus is what has managed to impress the tech enthusiasts worldwide and I hope they would continue to deliver blockbuster products in the days to come. Now getting back to the review, long press on the home screen, we have the wallpapers, widgets and customizing options. Changing wallpapers is a lot easy now for both the lock screen as well as your home screen as you can see for yourself. Swap between which one you want to change and then just choose the one you like among the ones listed. Then we have all the widgets that can be added to the home screen. The customizing options are quite interesting. As you can see we can turn off the shelf option, the quick search option and the notification drop down option if you don't prefer to have them. Then we get to select how the Google search bar looks. Then we get to select the icon size between small, standard and large. 
Finally, we get to choose how the apps appear in the app drawer with regard to the size of the icons. Now swiping down, we get to the quick settings panel where we have access to features like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, flashlight, etc. Now we can also change the way these appear. All you need to do is press the edit icon and then simply drag and drop the item where you want it to be as per your preference. Next, swiping to the right opens up the shelf feature where we can write down memos or reminders for our to-do list. The shelf also shows our frequently used apps, I guess. Here we have the option of enabling the weather widget as well. Getting into the settings, we see that we do get adaptive brightness feature, which is excellent. Thankfully, the NFC feature that went missing with the OnePlus 2 is now back with the OnePlus 3. Also, I personally like the notification LED color changing option. We can choose different colors to denote different purposes. For the regular notification, I have set it to yellow. When the battery is full, we get the green light. When the phone is charging, we get the blue light. When the battery is low, we get the red light. Getting into the app drawer, thankfully, there is no bloatware at all. All the pre-installed apps are the necessary ones. Also, the Oxygen OS UI based on the Android Marshmallow 6.1 seems very pleasant and easy to operate. It also gives us a pure and stock Android experience. Now taking a quick look at its important specs, the phone gets a 5.5 inch optic AMOLED display that offers really crisp and vivid images. It isn't as amazing as the Quad HD display found on the Samsung flagship with a jaw dropping pixel density of 577 ppi. The OnePlus 3 offers a 1080p display with a pixel density of 401 ppi. Nevertheless, I think it is very decent considering the fact that it costs just half as much as the Samsung S7. Other specs include 64 GB of internal memory. Now there is no provision or hybrid slot to expand the memory via a micro SD card. As you can see here, out of the 64 GB, we have 52.66 GB that is available out of the box. Also, we have 6 GB of RAM. Yes, you heard it right, 6 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM. Even some of the most expensive phones out there offer just around 4 gigs. So this is just out of this world. Looks like the Flash was one of the developers while OnePlus were readying this phone for us. Now out of the 6 GB of RAM, we see here that we have 4.4 GB that is free, which is phenomenal. Now to top things off, we get the top of the line Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 processor coupled with the Adreno 530 GPU that simply blow you away with their blazing performance. Be it graphic intensive gaming or multitasking, the phone almost stares back at you saying is that all you've got. I'll be posting the gaming review video of this phone soon as well. Also, this is a dual SIM phone with dual 4G nano SIM slots with dual standby. Now, powering the phone is a 3000 mAh battery and I'm quite satisfied with the battery life so far. Next, taking a look at the camera, we get a 16 megapixel primary camera with autofocus and single LED flash. The camera gets a Sony IMX298 sensor with f2.0 aperture. The camera also gets electronic and optical image stabilization along with dynamic denoise technology, thereby ensuring smooth and crisp pictures as well as video footage. Up front, we get an 8 megapixel camera with Sony IMX179 sensor and f2.0 lens. There's no autofocus or image stabilization offered for the front facing camera i guess the different modes offered include time lapse slow motion photo video manual and the panorama shot mode in the manual mode we can adjust the iso the white balance the shutter speed etc now here are some sample images that were taken indoors as you can see the images are really crisp and vivid with the colors being reproduced really well here are some images that i took outdoors you can see the images have come out really well considering its price range now here is a selfie that I took indoors under low light conditions. Now this one is taken outdoors as you can see and there is no noise apparent and the pics have come out very smooth as well. Now this is a panorama shot taken via the phone. And finally here is the full HD video clip shot using this particular phone. I will be uploading the 4K video sample separately. As you can see the video has come out really well and the optical image stabilization ensures that there are no jerks or shocks apparent in the video footage. Well I am afraid that's about it for now. The phone is currently priced at Rs 27,999 and is available exclusively on Amazon. One thing I did like about the phone is that there is no invite needed as of now for you to buy this phone. I'll be uploading this phone's gaming review soon. Also, I'll try and come up with other videos like long-term reviews pertaining to this phone in the days to come. 
Hope you found this video useful. Until next time, this is Dino saying ciao. Take care and God bless. Thank you.